Hello everyone, hope you're all doing well as we return today for the third installment in the Missing Minifigure series. Previously we discussed which Star Wars and Harry Potter minifigures we would love to see added to their respective lines. Today we'll discuss the Marvel Cinematic Universe and which minifigures are still missing despite almost two full decades of decadence. Please like and subscribe below if you enjoyed this content, guys. I would really appreciate it. There's also going to be a part two to this video, so you want to hit that bell so you don't miss it. A few ground rules first. We will only be discussing characters who have no minifigure representation whatsoever. Specific variants on existing characters are not eligible. Perhaps there's another video for another time. Second, we are going to be sticking solely to MCU movies in this video. Fear not because this video will be the first half of a two-part MCU minifigure combo. Next video, we will be sure to get in some of the more recent series fare that Marvel has been streaming on Disney+. Plus. Finally, let me know in the comments below which minifigures that I've neglected to mention on this list. There is a chance it will make it into part two of the missing MCU minifigures. This list here is certainly biased a bit towards characters or movies that I really enjoy, and thus I have scrutinized more closely, but I am sure that you all have your own favorites that have been snubbed, so let me know in the comments below. Of note, the new Avengers Tower set 76269, gave us a couple of minifigures that I otherwise would have had on this list, including Alexander Pierce, the head of Hydra from Winter Soldier, Dr. Helen Cho from Age of Ultron, and Dr. Eric Selvig from Avengers and multiple other films. Although these have thus far only been included in this expensive set, they're actually not that expensive to acquire. If you want to go buy them on BrickLink, it's only a few bucks to do so, I think five, six bucks a piece, and it gives me hope that we will indeed see more of the missing minifigures in future releases. Now we're going to get into the list, which I will go through in order of film appearances as they were released. To start the list off here, we have Ho Yinsen, who first appears in Iron Man. Yinsen is an instrumental part in the creation of Iron Man and the recreation of Tony Stark. Not only does Yinsen save Tony's life by installing the electromagnet that prevents the metallic shards from reaching Tony's heart, but he also instills upon him a newfound sense of morality and accountability. Tony was exposed to some truths that he'd long been neglecting, and Yinsen gave him direction on how to confront them. Yinsen reappeared in the beginning of Iron Man 3 during a flashback in which he briefly interacts with Tony at a science conference. Given Yinsen's role in the creation of Iron Man and Tony's centrality to the entirety of the Infinity Saga, this is one minifigure that we should have had long ago. Up next is General Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross. I was actually shocked to find out that a Thunderbolt Ross minifigure does not exist. From the Incredible Hulk on, the late great William Hurt would appear as Ross in four more films, Captain America Civil War, Infinity War, Endgame, and also Black Widow. It's wild that a character who has appeared in this many films for over a decade has not yet been made into a minifigure. Although William Hurt has sadly passed, Harrison Ford will portray the character on screen moving forward. He is slated to arrive in the newest Captain America film, featuring Sam Wilson as the titular hero, and he will presumably lead his own film in the Thunderbolts. We will almost assuredly get a minifigure of Vol Thunderbolt alongside one of these films, but it's kind of ridiculous that it took this long and that we haven't gotten a William Hurt version of the character. Howard Stark is a unique character in the MCU in that he's been featured pretty heavily in two distinct times at very different ages and by two different actors. Young Howard features heavily as a supporting character who helps lead in the creation of Captain America in the first Avenger. Older Howard would go on to appear in various films, usually as a means to propel Tony's storyline forward. He pops up in Iron Man 2, Ant-Man, Captain America Civil War, Avengers Endgame, and he is mentioned but not on screen in a handful of other films. I was really surprised to find out that we haven't gotten either version of this minifigure, and I would love to have both an older Howard and a young Howard added to the MCU suite. Next up on this list here we have Odin. I am not really sure how it's possible that they have left an Odin minifigure off the table for this long. Sir Anthony Hopkins portrays the character in all three initial Thor films, and similar to our prior Avengers father Howard Stark, he is mentioned in a handful of others. 
Odin's choices and past dictate a lot about Thor and our character's overarching story with the Infinity Stones. Given his array of on-screen time and film mentions, it's shocking to me that he still hasn't gotten his own minifig. This one feels like a slam dunk to happen eventually, but for some reason I feel like he may continue to get neglected because it's already been this long. Next on this list we have another Thor character, this is Heimdall. It is actually wild that we haven't seen hair nor hide of a Heimdall minifigure. It's an injustice of the highest order against Idris Elba and Marvel fans alike. He has never been on screen for very long in any particular scene, but he has appeared in all four of the Thor films, as well as Avengers Age of Ultron and Avengers Infinity War. Now that I think about it, it's kind of criminal by Marvel to cast someone of Idris' talent level and never even really let them cook, but that is another argument for another day. We've gotten Lego sets from every one of these Thor films, and none of them included Heimdall, which is incredibly lame. I have to imagine this is one we're going to get eventually, but I can't believe it hasn't at least been in a CMF series or an advent calendar already. Out of all the minifigures on this list, Darcy Lewis is one of the ones that I would put at the lower tiers of confidence in regards to its future prospects as a minifigure. I'm not sure if we'll ever actually get a Darcy minifigure, but this fun fan favorite supporting character has appeared in multiple films, as well as the first ever Disney plus Marvel series in WandaVision. With three films and a series to her credit, as well as multiple mentions elsewhere, it's certainly surprising that she remains off the roster. So many of the on-screen characters are powered that I think the audience actually naturally gravitates towards some of the unpowered supporting characters, and Darcy is no exception. Next up, Arnim Zola. This right here would rank pretty highly of all of the minifigures on this list for me personally. Zola is a really great ancillary villain, appearing in multiple Captain America films with an interesting character arc that allows Toby Jones to employ a wide range of emotions. In the first Avenger, he comes across as kind of timid and unsure of himself in his place within Hydra, not really sure if what he's doing is the right thing perhaps, but in Winter Soldier, his digitized conscious expounds with an almost maniacal energy at the prospect of killing the great Steven Rogers. Zola's actions are fundamental to the groundwork and future proliferation of Hydra, and it's definitely surprising to see that he hasn't gotten the minifigure that he deserves. Next up, we have Helmet Zemo. Following in the footsteps of Darcy Lewis, Zemo is an ancillary non-powered character who made the jump from big screen to small screen, first appearing as the very compelling villain of Captain America's Civil War. Zemo would go on to make an amusing and surprising ally to Sam Wilson and Bucky Barnes in the bulk of the series Falcon and the Winter Soldier on Disney+. Fan favorite, spawner of memes, and truly revolutionary villain, Zemo absolutely deserves to have his own Lego minifigure. I would argue that the best villains in all of Marvel are the ones who are the most human, and that's why figures like Zemo and the Vulture are so compelling to me. Give us that Zemo minifigure so we can recreate the dancing meme in brick-built glory. Up next, Next, we have a three-for-one special with Luis and Dave and Kurt from the first Ant-Man film and so on. While Zemo held similarities to Darcy in his deployment within the MCU projects, these three hold more similarities to her on-screen use. The non-powered comic relief of the Ant-Man films, Luis and his cohorts Dave and Kurt, are fan-favorite characters, propelling some of the most heartwarming and belly-busting moments in the MCU. One of my favorite writers and podcasters, Shea Serrano, is 100% correct when he asserts that every movie would be better with more Michael Pena. Luis's fervent and sidetrack storytelling moments are super fun, and we get just the right splashes of Dave and Kurt here and there for maximum laughs. Their friendship and their eternal support of Scott Lang are very endearing, and we should definitely get an XCON-based Lego set with all three minifigures included. We've seen Luis's van that was included in one of the uh, Endgame Final Battle Lego sets, but we need to see the trio in a set together. Next up here we have Kaecilius. There are not many Marvel films in which the central villain does not exist as a minifigure, but the first Doctor Strange is one of them. Kaecilius, as a former student at Comertage and a disciple to the Ancient One, decided to tap into the powers of the Dark Dimension after learning of his master's hypocrisies because the Ancient One was getting power from the Dark Dimension herself. That's why she was so ancient. Portrayed by the wonderful Mads Mikkelsen, Kaecilius is the human conduit through which the film's climactic villain Dormammu is delivered. While Doctor Strange might not have been one of the MCU's strongest films, it did well enough to establish one of its strongest and most important characters in Doctor Strange. Kaecilius feels ripe for future CMF 
or advent calendar inclusion. Next up is Ego. Now I know I just got done saying that there are not many Marvel films still missing the minifigure of their central villains, but Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is one of them. Released about seven months after the first Doctor Strange, Guardians 2 features the eternal Kurt Russell as Ego, a planet-devouring cosmic being who took on a human form to traverse the galaxy and proliferate his evil seed. One of these dalliances occurred on Earth, which resulted in the birth of Peter Quill. When Ego's motivation for reuniting with Peter is revealed to be one for personal gain, as opposed to genuine connection with his son, the Guardians are able to thwart his plan of galactic dominance. Kurt Russell is a Hollywood legend, and he absolutely deserves to have his own Ego minifigure. Next up is Aunt May. While Aunt May may exist as a minifigure, the MCU-specific version of this character remains off the LEGO superheroes roster. I know I'm not speaking for only myself when I say it's a travesty that the inimitable Marissa Tomei has yet to be enshrined in minifigure glory. We are all Tony Stark the restaurant waiter, and every other character in the MCU simply blessed with the presence of Peter's beloved Aunt May. And we all wish we were happy Hogan. I see you, John Favreau. I'm out here. I've seen Chef. I see, I see the uh, co-stars you put alongside you for your love interests. I respect it. It's also nice to see someone playing the character who would actually be the age you'd expect the aunt of a teenager to be. I'm sure we can all surmise that the Aunt May of the Raimi films is probably Peter's great aunt, but it's nice to see a younger take on the character and the way she interacts with others in this universe. Give us Aunt May. Everett K. Ross is up next on my list. Beloved Brit Martin Freeman brings a brilliant energy to the character of Everett Ross, a CIA agent who first appears in the Captain America Civil War, before subsequent appearances in both Black Panther films. Ross is unique in that he comes across as competent and authoritative, but he also shows the capacity for ignorance and an ability to grow beyond that as his character learns more of the realities about the world around him. He is an important side player as a softer representative of the U.S. government when compared to someone like the hardened Thunderbolt Ross. No relation. Everett Ross also feels ripe for a CMF or an Advent inclusion in the future. Winding down the list here, we have Wakabi next. Daniel Kaluuya is without a doubt one of the most talented actors working today, and his performance as Wakabi in Black Panther is superb. His chemistry with Chadwick Boseman is instantly believable. These are lifelong friends pursuing the security and the safety of their hidden empire. His character arc is really compelling, bouncing from soldier to skeptic to mutineer and back around to supporter. It really propels forward the character arcs of those around him, most notably T'Challa and his views on how Wakanda should be interacting with the outside world and what their responsibilities should be towards the betterment of the entire Earth instead of just the protection of the Wakandans. Although Wakabi does not appear in multiple films like most of the characters on this list, his position within Black Panther and that film's importance to the MCU should warrant its own minifigure. Last, but certainly not least, is one of my personal favorite recurring characters, Jimmy Woo. Portrayed by the charming and hilarious Randall Park, Agent Wu recurs as an FBI agent first tasked with parole duties to the house arrested Scott Lang before appearing in WandaVision trying to crack the secrets of the Hex. Agent Wu often acts as an audience analog in many of his scenes, expressing wonder at the simplest of tricks and skepticism at the mystifying nature of the more magical moments. Wu is definitely a character that I'd have thought we'd see in a CMF series, and I actually do expect that to happen in the future. I hope he is featured in additional projects going forward, which would also increase the likelihood that we see him as a minifigure. That's going to do it for today, folks, but there are numerous characters that I had to cut from my list to get down to just 15 for this video. I will most definitely be doing a part 2 follow-up to this video, and it's plausible that I may even fit a part 3 in with the growing roster of Marvel television shows. I had over 30 names on my list before even getting to Phase 4 of the MCU and getting into really any of the Disney Plus series, so I could definitely get to 45 if we wanted to i'm sure i've excluded some of your favorites from this list so head on down to the comments below let me know which mcu characters that you are chomping at the bit to see as lego minifigures if you enjoyed this video you'll definitely want to subscribe to the channel and turn on that bell so you don't miss the next installment for every like this video gets lego gets 0.1 percent closer to making the minifigure that you want to see i'll catch you next time folks thanks for checking it out